Then finally, in 1950, the Pakistan government decided that these halfway houses won't do. They are going to get rid of the Hindu minority in East Pakistan once and for all. So in February 1950, when in India we were celebrating our first Republic Day, in February 1950, the Pakistanis started a pogrom, not a riot, a pogrom, one-sided killing of Hindus in East Pakistan. And it went on until uh, March, until March 1950. And in between, nobody knows, nobody has the number of how many Hindus were killed, how many women, Hindu women were raped, how many Hindu women went missing, how many Hindus were dispossessed. But on the whole, I have done some calculation on the basis of which I have inserted in my book, My People Uprooted. In that, I have calculated that on the whole, 1.2 crores of Hindus were displaced from East Pakistan or subsequently Bangladesh and came to India. And mind you, this, is, this was a one-way movement. Unlike Punjab, this was a one-way movement. In Punjab, all the Hindus and Sikhs came away from West Punjab. And all the Muslims went to... Uh, 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 from Indian Punjab to Pakistani Punjab. But in Bengal, there was a one-way movement. There was no reciprocal movement of Muslims from West Bengal to East Bengal. As a result, the, Muslim, the refugees who came from East Bengal, they did not have any sort of a vacant Muslim property as the Punjabi refugees had, which was allotted to them officially by the government all over Punjab and the present day Punjab, Haryana and parts of Himachal Pradesh. The Muslim properties which were abandoned were given, but there was no such succor for the Bengali refugees. These things were brought to the notice of Nehru, Pai Shama Prasad Mukherjee, inside the cabinet. And situation started taking such a bad turn. There were such slaughters of Hindus all over Pakistan, all over East Pakistan, that Dr. Shaman Prasad Mukherjee was no longer content with voicing it inside the cabinet. He started talking about it openly, even in the parliament. He demanded an exchange of population. Nehru gave some very high-flown arguments about not having an exchange of population. He said this is a matter of trust. All the Muslims who have stayed back in India, they have trusted us. This is nonsense. I have nothing against the Muslims who have stayed back in India, but they had all voted for the Muslim League in the 1945 elections to the Central Assembly in British India. So they wanted Pakistan. It simply happened that they, at that time, Pakistan had not taken shape. Nobody knew which part would go to by, by India, which part would go to Pakistan. So at that time, uh, the people who voted for Pakistan did not know whether their place will remain in India or Pakistan. When they found that their place was still in India, those Muslims decided to stay back because nobody for no reason wants to leave his home and hurt. They stayed back and the Indian state helped them, which I think is justified in the fitness of things. But that does not mean that they had reposed any kind of trust in India. But that was Nehru. Nehru's thinking was so muddled that the eminent journalist Durga Das had mentioned that he used to live in his own land of make-believe. And when reality clashed with make-believe, his make-believe land, he chose his make-believe rather than reality. So Nehru did not agree to this kind of exchange of population. Dr. Shamprasad Mukherjee went to the extent of saying that when the exchange of population in Punjab took place, then Nehru must have kept all these high talks and ideas in cold storage. Now, I beseech him that he can put these talks, uh, he can put these things again in cold storage 
and, and in for an exchange of population. But Nehru didn't listen to it. Meanwhile, the slaughter of Hindus went on. I'll just give one example of what the government-sponsored pogrom, slaughter of Hindus can be. There is a bridge called the, Meg the across the Meghna River in present-day Bangladesh. It's quite a big bridge. Meghna is a major river. It's um, uh, longer than uh, Delhi's Jamuna Bridge. More about the same size, same length, but it was over a perennial river. There is always water in that river. This is between the stations of Ashuganj and Bhairab Bazar in uh, Bangladesh, then in East Pakistan. This bridge uh, is, the, is a very important link between the principal towns of Dhaka and Chittagong. Now, on 12th of February, 1950, all trains which passed over this bridge were stopped in mid-river, and all Hindus in those trains were butchered, and their dead, and their dead or half-dead bodies were thrown into the river. I got this. I mean, this is widely known. I mean, uh, people who have done this research, but uh, it has not been recorded by anyone other, other, earlier than, I'm sorry to say, earlier than me. But this thing, this uh, wholesale slaughter, could not have been possible without the uh, whole thing having been planned by the government. Otherwise, why should every train stop in the middle of the river? I was saying where I got it from. I got it from an eyewitness. This eyewitness was spared by the Muslims only because he happened to be wearing pajamas. Those days, Hindus all were used to, used to wear dhotis. Muslims used to wear lungis or pajamas. This person was wearing a pair of pajamas, which is why he was mistaken for a Muslim and he was spared. Otherwise, all the Hindus were killed. The women had sindur in their head or they had other signs of um, Hindu. They had a bindi on their forehead, like you have. And uh, these identified them as Hindu women. They were all, their throats were slit and they were thrown into the river. Now, this thing is not known to the rest of India, but this proves beyond doubt that this, there was complicity of the government in this whole thing. Why complicity? The government had planned it. This was all planned by a, the chief secretary of uh, East Pakistan. His name was Aziz Ahmed. And this Aziz Ahmed was an ICS officer, Indian Civil Service, who had opted for Pakistan. He has been described by our BK Nehru, who also belonged to the ICS. BK Nehru has described him as notoriously anti-Hindu. BK Nehru's autobiography, which I have here with me, it's called Nice Guys Finish Second. It describes Aziz Ahmed, this slaughterer of Hindus, as uh, notoriously anti-Hindu. So this process went on. Nehru proposed to Liaquat Ali. At that time, he was the uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan. He proposed to Liaquat Ali that they undertake a joint visit of East Pakistan. Liaquat Ali absolutely rubbished it. He didn't do it. And Nehru didn't have the courage to force it. Then, uh, subsequently, uh, a sort of retaliatory uh, riots had started in West Bengal. As soon as the retaliatory riots had started, Nehru suddenly woke up. Until then, this kind of thing was happening. The slaughter of Hindus were happening all over East Bengal, but he wasn't bothering. But as soon as the retaliation started, he suddenly woke up and said, this will not be tolerated. He, will imme he immediately got the police and the military to get down to the job. And then he managed to put down. The West Bengal government was led by, at that time by Dr. Bisira. They also cooperated. Dr. Mukherjee was never in favor of this retaliation. But he wanted justice to be done to the East Bengali Hindus, which... Nehru refused. Then, once this retaliation started, not just Nehru, 
but liaquat ali also um, spoke up uh, woke up until then liaquat ali was not giving any sort of truck uh, uh, any any sort of room to nehru nehru's promise uh, nehru's proposal of undertaking a joint inspection was totally poo pooed by him but when muslim started killing getting killed in west bengal he woke up and he proposed that nehru and liaquat ali sign a pact now nehru immediately jumped at it and they signed a pact on the 8th of april 1950 8th of april 1950 is a black day this nehru liaquat pact also called the delhi pact is a piece of political stupidity why do i say so because it could not have been unknown to nehru who had his intelligence network it could not have been unknown to him that the violence the slaughter of hindus in east pakistan was the act of the east pakistan government itself so with whom was he making a pact he was making a pact with the government which had him itself started an anti hindu pogrom and what was the content of the pact the content of the pact was the same as the two inter dominion agreements earlier which said that each country should look after its own uh, its own uh, minorities the whole thing is a piece of nonsense but as i said as durga das had said that nehru lived in his own world of make believe and he simply uh, gave in to whatever liaquat ali uh, said then nehru then dr sham prasad mukherjee decided that he can't countenance this thing while being in the cabinet he is going to resign from the cabinet not only him but there was another bengali minister called khitish chandra niyogi he also resigned from the cabinet the resignation letter of dr sham prasad mukherjee is a classic expose of the uh, idiocy of jawar lal nehru in this particular phase